Thank you. Um, your introduction was too kind. And uh, I can tell you it's a great privilege to be introduced um, after Al Siegel, uh, of whom I had enormous uh, respect. And um, um, we, we will all miss him, but, but it's a great legacy that he leaves behind him. And, and seeing a, a kinder and gentler Greg Berman will be interesting as well. So. <laughs> I always thought of you as kind and Thank gentle, Greg. I also uh, join uh, in, in Lori Robinson's um, accolades um, to the work that Greg Berman has done and uh, Julius Lang and the entire staff of the Center for Court Innovation. Uh, you are just such a, a tremendous partner for us, and you have to feel very proud here with this group of, of so many leaders in the um, the, the, the innovative criminal justice programs that you've inspired, particularly in the community court area. So thank you so much. And thank you uh, to all of our partners here, the California Administrative Office of the Courts, um, the California Endowment, Target, and it, it was just so great to start out with the wonderful leaders that you have here in San Francisco uh, with the public defender and the district attorney and the chief judge um, coming together to discuss collaborative justice. So I couldn't be happier to be here in San Francisco where so much innovation um, is really happening. I also want to recognize Kim Ball, uh, our senior policy advisor at BJA, who somehow manages to support so many innovative programs. So thank you, Kim. I want to also recognize Cabell Cropper, the executive director of the National Criminal Justice Association, for all of his work in really bringing and inspiring evidence-based programs and practices in the justice assistance grants uh, program with all the state administrative agencies. So thank you so much uh, for your leadership, Cavill. Uh, I know you've heard a lot of speakers already this morning, uh, but I appreciate uh, your patience in allowing me to come and speak to you about the Bureau of Justice Assistance and the role that we are playing um, in hopefully inspiring innovation throughout the country and um, investing in evidence-based programs and, and practices uh, that make our communities safer. Uh, we are in year two of a very exciting strategic plan at BJA with a mission to reduce crime, recidivism, and unnecessary confinement and support a safe and just criminal justice system. That's a different strategic plan, I would say, uh, than traditionally was the case um, in the Justice Department and, and in uh, BJA uh, years ago. Um, so you can see um, we've, we've discussed and, and heard um, from District Attorney Gascon the fact that we are here together to really talk about a different way uh, a different criminal justice system, a collaborative criminal justice system that focuses on at the same time reducing crime, recidivism, and unnecessary confinement. Um, I think we share such a strong commitment uh, to support community courts, crime prevention, effective treatment, diversion programs, reentry programs, uh, justice systems reform, and the secret ingredient as, as referred to in the agenda uh, procedural justice and fairness. We share a commi commitment that I think you have here in San Francisco to encourage and embrace innovation, which is an, an, another important theme of this summit. So um, I like to think about this time in which we live as a real renaissance in criminal justice thinking. We know so much more now than ever before about what works in the criminal justice field. Because of improved data, uh, action-based research, there are more opportunities than ever before to achieve true systems reform that results in stronger and safer communities. And that is all because of the work that you are all doing um, in innovation, in, in willingness to try uh, new things, in, in willingness to be held accountable um, through research and evaluation, and CCI certainly leads the way in, in that area. So I'm going to use my uh, short time this morning to talk about three areas of innovation at BJA, and I hope that you will find them as exciting uh, as we do. 
Um, the first is BJA's new suite of smart on crime programs. Uh, the second is our rapidly expanding justice uh, systems reform efforts through the Justice reinvestment initiative. And the third is exciting work that BJA is doing in the area of community justice and engagement. So let me begin with our new suite of smart on crime programs. Attorney General Eric Holder recently announced a DOJ smart on crime initiative focused on the federal system. And we at BJA are supporting that initiative by expanding our suite of smart on crime programs at the state, local, and tribal levels. <laughs> Several years ago, BJA began a smart policing initiative to, su to support police research partnerships and encourage police departments to adopt new policing strategies based on data and to evaluate the outcomes to expand the research on what works in policing. In 2014, BJA has expanded the smart policing model for practitioner research partnerships in, in several different areas. First, smart pretrial. Um, you know, I, I can't think of an area um, that is more ripe for reform in our criminal justice system or which will pay greater dividends nationwide than pretrial justice reform. I know uh, uh, many organizations um, in New York City and in other places in the country worked very hard on, on pretrial reforms, I think almost 50 years ago. Um, and we saw some reforms and some of them stayed, um, but many lost track, lost their way um, during the following years and I think um, the, the focus that has been placed now on pretrial reform um, is so important. Uh, pretrial detention costs in this country are, are uh, estimated to exceed over $6 billion a year. And we know that 60% of the individuals incarcerated in our jails before trial are there before trial, before any adjudication of guilt. So this is an area that community courts have been addressing now uh, from the, the beginning of the community court um, uh, movement by focusing on alternatives um, to detention. Uh, but now we really have an incredible opportunity through the leadership of the Pretrial Justice Institute, um, Ted Murray, uh, Murray for, for his incredible, Tim Murray, I'm sorry, for his incredible leadership in that area. And this year, for the first time, uh, BJA is going to be able to fund pilot programs um, for pretrial um, and, and through BJA's Smart Pretrial Solicitation, which we're very excited about. Also uh, this year, BJA, for the first time, has a Smart Prosecution uh, solicitation to focus on promising prosecution models like community prosecutions, conviction integrity units, and diversion programs for low-risk offenders, which we're so excited about. And this is year two in BJA's new smart supervision program to strengthen parole and probation supervision by focusing on evidence-based programs like the Hawaii HOPE, a swift and certain sanction models, graduated rewards and sanctions, and treatment uh, programs like motivational interviewing and cognitive behavioral treatment programs uh, during community supervision. And in 2015, we intend to support a smart defense program to build on an existing BJA program called Answering Gideon's Call to strengthen indigent defense nationwide. So BJA's smart on crime programs have three common features. They are data-driven, they used evidence-based or promising strategies, and they incorporate a research practitioner partnership to analyze data and measure the results. So this is such an exciting time for us at BJA. And most of these, or some of these solicitations are currently open. So I'd like you to take a look at them and encourage you to consider partnering uh, with other organizations and taking advantage of those programs. Uh, the second area I want to talk about is justice systems reform. Working with our partners, BJA is now, more than ever before, taking a holistic approach uh, to community justice and safety. The linchpin of that effort is the Justice Reinvestment Initiative. 
Currently, 20 states in 17 localities, including San Francisco, are participating in JRI and are working to reform their criminal justice systems, reduce spending on unnecessary incarceration costs, and reinvest in high-performing programs to make communities safer. JRI is a public-private partnership between BJA and the Pew Center for the State's Public Safety Performance Project. It's a nonpartisan, data-driven approach that uses the state's own or locality's own data to identify the drivers of incarcer incarceration uh, populations and costs. Central to the JRI model is a bipartisan group of top stakeholders at the state level, typically the governor and the heads of the legislatures and uh, the chief justice, which consider policy options and work together to enact criminal um, justice reform legislation. Pew, the Council of State Governments, uh, Justice Center, and the Vera Institute of Justice provide technical assistance uh, to the states as part of this process. A state assessment report uh, released by the Urban Institute in February 2014, found that JRI has successfully promoted interest in justice reform and the use of evidence-based practices across the 17 states participating uh, in that assessment. So far, nearly $166 million has been reinvested, over $142 million in upfront investments, um, or funding based on projected savings, and nearly 24 million in reinvestment of tangible savings. The Urban Institute estimated that the total projected savings from JRI could amount to as much as $4.6 billion over 11 years if all the projected savings are achieved. Uh, we know that that's a tall order to fulfill, uh, but even a fraction of that could have an incredible impact on our criminal justice system if those funds can be reinvested in the kinds of programs that we're going to be talking about over the next three days. Uh, in 2014, Congress substantially increased BJ's funding for JRI to expand the number of states able to participate, to expand to a juvenile uh, justice reinvestment component, and to provide enhanced funding for states to cement the kinds of changes that they are making through their justice reform uh, legislation. BJA has just released a new solicitation for the 20 states, which many of you may live in, uh, who have enacted, enacted already justice uh, reinvestment legislation. Those states are able now to compete for new maximizing state reform grants of up to $1.75 million over three years. I think this opens up a lot of possibilities for criminal justice organizations in those states, including community justice partners, to become part of the state strategies uh, for justice reinvestment. Finally, I, I'm going to close by discussing several BJA initiatives, which I think will be of particular interest to you because of their nexus with community justice and building uh, the capacity of the communities which you serve. The first is the Burn Criminal Justice Innovation Program, which has already been mentioned. Um, it is part of the Obama administration's larger neighborhood revitalization initiative that helps local and tribal communities develop place-based, community-oriented strategies with coordinated federal support to change neighborhoods of distress into neighborhoods of opportunity. We'll be doing a session, as you heard, on BCJI at 1.30, so I won't go deeply into it now, but I am excited uh, that the community courts, including the Brownsville Community Justice Center and, of course, uh, the, the um, San Francisco Justice Center, um, which is managed by um, the office of DA Gascon, will be participating um, in that workshop. Um, we also, I know, have Julia Ryan here from LISC, who is the training and technical assistance provider for BCJI, um, so she'll be available if you have any questions. Uh, but BJA's solicitation for, for BCJI is currently open, and I hope you'll take a look at that. Uh, we, we made this announcement uh, last year at a, a conference hosted by CCI and got some great applications from people who were in the audience. So I hope you'll consider applying um, for that solicitation. 
Um, another program that was briefly mentioned was crime prevention through environmental design. Again, a program that can have so much um, to offer to groups and organizations focusing on neighborhood place-based strategies uh, for community safety. BC, or BJA has a national training and technical assistance center uh, called NTAC, and we currently have experts um, through NTAC that can work with you in your community on SEPTED um, strategies, um, and we're gonna have a workshop on that um, today at the, at the conference. Um, I also want to um, talk about two, two important programs that we have going on um, with the Center for Court Innovation. The first is called Improving Courtroom Communications, which aims to bring the lessons of procedural justice right into your own practice. Three sites were selected for training this year, the 8th Judicial District of Colorado, the Delaware Justice of the Peace Court, and the 11th Judicial Circuit of Florida, Miami-Dade County. Impressively, they were selected from 27 jurisdictions that applied for training, a clear indication that this is something practitioners want to learn more about. So what's more um, exciting is that we're gonna work with CCI uh, on a curriculum and online learning system under this initiative. So eventually those tools will be made available free of charge to all of you. The second project has already been mentioned, and that's a misdemeanor evidence-based assessment project, um, which you'll also hear about um, after you hear from um, Dr. Latessa today talking about the importance of risk instruments. Uh, we've known for a long time that what's been missing um, from the work that's been done in the area of risk uh, needs assessments is a tool designed um, for misdemeanors and, and for courts um, a, a addressing uh, the large number of misdemeanor offenders. And CCI is working hard um, with their researchers on creating that tool, which I think will be um, very, very exciting um, for all of us. In closing, I just wanna say thank you for the important work you are all doing um, in this, in, in working together toward a collaborative uh, criminal justice system. I think that the work that the community courts have done are really leading the way in, in so many areas, um, from providing an alternative to detention and incarceration, to offering a pathway to restorative justice uh, through community service for so many justice-involved persons. We know from recent research and evaluations that the conduct and engagement of community court judges with persons who come before them is seen as a real model for the country for procedural justice that leads to ultimate acceptance and reductions in recidivism uh, by offenders. Uh, you're gonna have an opportunity uh, during the, this um, summit to hear a presentation by Dr. Tracy Mears and the panel that follows on procedural fairness. And I think um, that that's um, really gonna be so important to all of us as we continue um, the work that we do. I'd like to um, finally close by paying tribute to an important catalyst for the growth and the quality of the community courts nationwide, namely the three outstanding community courts Hartford, Connecticut, Dallas, Texas, and Seattle, Washington, that have worked with the Center for Court Innovation for the past five years as mentor sites for the community court model. Your contribution, hosting regional site visits, sharing your forms and manuals, answering questions for practitioners, have enabled all of us collectively to leverage our technical assistance efforts and make them so effective. So I'd like to ask them to stand if you're in the room. I'm from Hartford, Dallas, and Seattle, and give them a big round of applause. I understand that new mentor courts uh, will be selected and will be announced uh, sometime, hopefully before the close uh, of the summit. Um, and, um, and thank you again for the important work uh, that you have done um, to spread this community justice um, uh,
program throughout, throughout our country. Thank you also to uh, those of you who have come from other countries to make this truly um, an international summit and to take the good ideas um, that so many people in this room have been working so hard uh, to implement back to your country so that this truly is a worldwide movement. And now um, on with the star-studded, uh, action-filled agenda um, for the 2014 International Community Justice Summit. Thank you. Thank you.